91 Americans die every single day from an opioid overdose. That's why we've been tackling this national crisis all year on our show. Millions of Americans are caught up in this epidemic. They're looking for new ways to treat their addiction. And there have been some exciting new developments and therapies that have been approved recently by the FDA because that detox and withdrawal process, even if you're trying to get clean, can be severe, can be overwhelming. Well, the FDA approved a device to help reduce opioid withdrawal symptoms. It's called the bridge. And what it is, is as you're looking at it here, small electrical nerve stimulators placed behind the ear that emits electrical pulses and it stimulates branches of certain cranial nerves. And then these stimulations, what they do is help provide relief from the withdrawal symptoms you may be going through. Currently, it's only available by prescription. It's used in hospitals, community health centers, private doctors and centers as well that deal with addiction. And you can use it up to five days during the acute withdrawal phase. I really like this mm -hmm. because it doesn't use, one of the big issues with opiate addiction is using more Drug. drugs to yeah, treat it. This is a, a, a new, yeah. right. new way of treating it without using more drugs. And pretty impressive results in a study, 31% um, saw reduction in clinical opiate withdrawal, or 31% reduction on the opiate withdrawal scale. So everyone was seeing, yeah. so, seemed to be seeing some well, and, and it makes sense, that so-called mastoid area behind the ear, that's sort of grand central station for those cranial nerves. You have the fifth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, mm -hmm. the 10th cranial nerves. They have feedback mechanisms to the central nervous system, may affect the sympathetic nervous system. Physiologically, neurologically, there's a reason why this may be doing it something. It makes sense, it's not just a placebo effect. Like yes. taking but, away those. But yeah. Judy, I think you'll be the first to say that, you know, in dealing with these tough addiction issues that usually one modality right is not enough right you need more than one this is a great start though because <laughs> withdrawals are some of the reasons why people go back to using mm -hmm. it's they're so severe especially for opioid withdrawals or things like agitation nausea gi problems all of their pain comes back anxiety depression and so they go back and use even though they really don't want to so this is an amazing thing just to get them through the first few tough days and then after that of course they need to sort of combine both medication, assisted therapies, and cognitive behavioral treatment to really get the best results. But the journey is still so far ahead. The first few days are crazy. And the more treatments that we have, like I said, that don't necessarily involve more medications, the better. And these new developments, we know they're important. Why? Because opioid addiction rates have continued to skyrocket, almost 500% increase in the past seven years. Yeah. Anna is one looking for help. I drank six beers by myself the first time I drank at 11 years old. Then when I was 15, a friend of mine introduced me to meth. We had gone to this very prestigious private school together, and I thought, how bad could it be? And I turned around one day and I was a meth addict. I was arrested on my dad's birthday, and I just felt like such a pile of garbage calling from jail. It was actually my attorney's suggestion that I go to rehab. It would look good to the judge. I was there for 30 days and I got out, I got high again. I ended up living in my car. And when I was 25, I went to rehab a second time. I ended up staying there like five or six months. I was like really into the idea. I injured my wrist and I'm in pain. And they sent me to this doctor who would just give me 90 Norcos and send me on my way. So I just became really hooked on opiates. I stopped talking to everyone. I didn't want my real friends to know like what I was doing, who I'd become. And I didn't want to call my friends and say like, by the way, I'm hooked on opiates and now I need help. I just had hit a breaking point and went on like a nine or 10 day binge. I thought like, I'm for sure dying right now. And towards the end of that, one of the people that I'd reached out to called me and he said, I'm very concerned about your state of mind for your health. Like I need you to get to see a doctor immediately. The 
more I taper down, the more I start to feel the withdrawals, the uncontrollable shaking, the freezing or the sweating or the nightmares. Every muscle in my body aches. There must be something better out there. Anna sought out addiction specialist, Dr. Joseph DeSanto, who determined she was a candidate for a newly approved FDA bridge device to reduce her withdrawal symptoms and a cutting edge implant program that could help keep her sober. This is certainly my first attempt at something like this. How would you classify your anxiety right now? Like a seven or eight. Anna is the perfect candidate for this procedure. According to Anna's withdrawal score, she's in moderately severe withdrawal. Like extra emotional from going through withdrawal, I think, but I've been very shaky okay. and a lot of physical pain. So the symptoms that you're feeling are completely uh, expected and the bridge should take care of most of these symptoms. Do you feel a pinch, okay? Do you feel it pierce? Mm -hmm. Okay. I feel a little prick. So I'm now placing the third probe. Ready for the fourth? Okay, this is the last one. Perfectly right against the ear. Okay, we have all four leads attached. Do you feel it? Yeah. There it goes. I feel like little shocks. You feel little shocks? Yeah. Great. Should be working. I'm making a small incision into the fatty tissue. So this is what the implant looks like. I'm making a little tunnel. And it's as easy as pushing down the plunger, and the implant stays inside. Okay, you ready for number two? I'm ready. Okay. I don't have a fear about this. If it doesn't work, then oh well. What do you see your future as right now? I don't. I still don't see like a future, um, and that's sad. <laughs> Anna and Dr. DeSanto are joining us now in the audience. And first things first, Anna, I just want to applaud you for seeking help. Mm -hmm. In your most desperate moment, you sought help. And that takes an incredible amount of courage. That last bit said you still were having trouble seeing a bright future. How have you been doing? I'm doing great. Uh, I'm applying to grad school right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've been depressed and anxious as long as I can remember. I've spent my life that way. And as much as I knew that I was different from other people and didn't think the same way and didn't feel the same way, I was, I was so hard on myself all the time. And now I'm not depressed, I'm not anxious, starting with the bridge device. Um, and really within a matter of hours, it's crazy. And I feel like I have these sort of magical powers almost because not everybody gets to go through, like, really, though. <laughs> not everybody gets to go through life truly being depressed and then truly not. And um, I just have so much compassion for myself that I wish I would have had my whole life. Um, and I get to just be really loving and gentle with myself now, and it's, it's really a gift. And, and it sounds like both the bridge device, the naltrexone injection, that that allowed you to get through not only withdrawal, but some of the cravings so that you could get to this place, is that fair to say? Absolutely, yeah, I, I mean, and I was stunned, I mean, Dr. DeSanto was explaining to me that that would be the case, but, you know, I have struggled, you know, as I said, I've struggled with addiction since I was 11, but I've struggled with recovery since I was 21, I'm 34 now, um, so it was really tough for me to hear and believe, yeah, this will start working for you within a matter of minutes or hours, really did. Are you using cognitive behavioral therapy as well? Yes, absolutely, okay. absolutely, yes, yeah, critical. Okay. So Anna, I love that you're here to tell us this because so many people feel hopeless when they're in the throes of drug addiction. They really feel like there's no way out. And as you just heard us speak, and you, I know you've experienced it yourself, that withdrawal phase is so difficult. And now you're past that. Tell me about whether or not you still have cravings and if that's even a part of the picture anymore. I don't have cravings. I have zero physical cravings, also crazy. Um, the thing that I maybe struggle with are just sort of habitual things. I'll get to a place early and I'm like, oh, I'll like have a drink to kill time. Oh, right, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> um, 
So those are just lifestyle things that I've done for so long, but um, so far hasn't been an issue, so. Well, Anna, you're restructuring your life now. Dr. DeSanto, a real success story here with Anna. I mean, is this a typical response that you're seeing? And comment how powerful this combination of modalities is working with people it, it, in recovery. It really is. I mean, the first time I was shown the bridge device to use in my office, I was the same as her. There's no way that this is gonna happen. I've seen videos on YouTube of how well it works. But when I, when I saw it actually working, it's amazing. You were talking about the cow scores, the withdrawal scores. They dropped from super high to, to almost zero in a matter of a half an hour so to why, an hour. I wanna ask you, because a lot of us are hearing about this for the first time. I know it's newly FDA approved. It, it feels as though this is something that most people going through withdrawals should consider using. Is it getting out there so that most treatment centers are having access to a treatment like this? Or is it still so new that it's only now being discovered even by addiction specialists? It, it is relatively new and unfortunately, a lot of treatment centers are not using the bridge. Mm -hmm. And it, primarily because FDA approval, it's just brand new, insurances aren't covering it. And most treatment centers are requiring insurance payments now. What about the implant, is that readily available? It is through my office, I mean, yes. Oh, what about yes. across the country? We're now training other doctors throughout the country. And it lasts for six months, right? It lasts for several months. Uh, we're still um, ongoing trials to, to hopefully get FDA approved. Uh, but what happens, what happens after the six months? Like, do they have to get another one? Or Because it's a great device, it's doing wonders for her. So I'm just yeah. curious, once, you know, the six months or seven months or eight months pass, what will happen with her cravings? Well, as the, as the implant wears off, we have several options. You know, if she feels comfortable in her sobriety, mm -hmm. and, and that's the great thing about the implant for the first three months, it reduces the physical craving so you can work on the emotional and psychosocial aspect, right. which is imperative. I never do the implant without some sort of comprehensive program. And Anne is participating in that right now. We can also um, keep doing the implant. We, we can, you know, typically three, four, five months later, we can do another implant. And if we can get patients to about a year sober, the, the, the sobriety rates, lifelong sobriety rates go skyrocketing. So well, and I, I, that, I wanna, that is the finish line. I want everyone to look at Anna one more time because we've been saying all year long that the face of addiction could be your neighbor, could be your daughter, could be your best friend, because you bravely came here because you are one of the many faces of addiction and no one would ever look at you and say, oh my gosh, she is someone caught up in the opiate crisis, but I also want people to look at your face because you are a success story right now. You've turned your life around and we congratulate you and hopefully you being here today gives a lot of hope to people at home who are watching who may be suffering or may have a loved one. So thank you for sharing your story. We're gonna have more information on our website about some of these new modalities.